20 determined celebrities set their sights on winning this year's MasterChef title. Come on! Rise! Oh, Greg, help me! <laughs> Sorry. It's so exciting. Ah! Uh, could start crying. Oh! <laughs> Whoa. No damn tarts. Mm. Only the three most talented remain. If I win the title of MasterChef, it's like ticking off a thing on a bucket list. I'm 29 now, things to do before I'm 30. Win MasterChef, that'd be great. It'd be amazing. This is a massive personal achievement for me because you know, any other competition type things I've done have always been sort of personality based. But this one is actually on talent. And I, I can't believe it. I know I'm going to be fighting those butterflies because they are aggressive. And to be crowned champion of this amazing experience would just mean so much. It means all this hard work is really worth it. Now, the finalists must undertake two massive challenges. First, they will have to cook Michelin star dishes for some of the country's best chefs. Cheers! Before heading back to the MasterChef kitchen to cook their final three courses. At the end, one of them will be crowned Celebrity MasterChef Champion 2015. I grew up in Stepney Green in East London, and then when I was 11, I moved to Essex. I had a very happy childhood, definitely. You know, we didn't have everything, but I had everything I needed. Um, and I had my mum and my nan, so, yeah. He loved going to school, would never have no time off for of school. You know, he served on the altar. Catholic boy, young Catholic boy he was, you know. Still is a Catholic boy. He was just a good child, you know, a, when he was young, growing up. I always knew that I wanted to be sort of known for something, but I didn't really know what it was. And then as I, as I started to get older, I started to get into performing, and, and that's when I sort of knew that's what I actually wanted to do as a real job, rather than do a real job. I built this house a year ago, and I could probably count on one hand the amount of times I've cooked in this kitchen. Do you know what this is? Spring onion. Did you learn that on MasterChef? No, I knew I've known what spring onion is. To actually sit down and cook a dinner, it doesn't happen. He's often watching me in the kitchen, and that's it's a little bit frustrating, if I'm honest, that he's done so well, but that obviously doesn't mean that I'm not happy for it. Look, I'm really pleased that you've done well, you know I am. No, but you're not. I just wish that I'd get to see the benefit of living with a MasterChef finalist, but I don't think it's going to happen, is it? If I would have known how hard this competition was going to be when I agreed to do this, I wouldn't have done it. If someone said you're going to have sleepless nights, wake up looking like you've got curtains hanging from your eyes, let alone bags, I, I would not have done this competition. I'm sweating, my makeup's coming down with my top. But this has been the most exciting, hilarious, learning curve experience I've ever had in my life. And I've got John in a tiara. Mum, John Brisket. No, why? Well, you made them. No, I haven't made them. I don't want them. He doesn't see anything as impossible. And I think that's probably what's carried him as far as he's got, his kind of enthusiasm and his eagerness to kind of learn. So, ultimately, he, he, he deserves to win. You know, good luck. And I'll just, just do your best and carry on how you're doing and we're all proud of you. And I love you. Cheers, my little darling. <laughs> little darling, look at the size of him. <laughs> <laughs> Whole way through, I thought, no, there's no way you're going to win this. Just have a lovely time and enjoy it. And now I'm in the final three. And that's just exceeded my expectation further than I ever thought. 
I've won it anyway. I've definitely won it anyway in my head because I can at least turn on a hob. I was born and raised in a very, very small farm town in the middle of America called Warrensburg, Missouri. It's just a lot of farmers, really. A lot of hillbillies, little cowboys. <laughs> My dad was a truck driver, my mom worked for him as well. My brothers were all mechanics and builders and things. And yeah, just lived the, the good life as a little small town American girl. I found dance at seven years old. Once I started, I was just hooked. Yeah, the dream began. <laughs> Pussycat Dolls was the dream job. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? Don't you wish your girlfriend was a freak like me? Don't you? Getting all dolled up in your fishnets and stilettos. Don't you? And big hair and makeup. We toured, we danced, we sang, and we went all over the world. I would have never dreamed in a million years that I would have ended up in London, married to an English man, but I found love. <laughs> Came back from honeymoon with a baby on the way. And now I've got my little girl Willow and I think becoming a mother has just been the biggest, most amazing accomplishment of my life. I feel like I'm somewhat of a mom on a mission that wants to create an amazing life for my little girl. I wanna give her a, a real foundation. And I kind of have learned through English culture and Sunday roast, food is the foundation. It's what brings everybody together. And so I've been inspired by that. What better way than MasterChef? I'm a dancer, what am I doing here? This has been one of the hardest challenges I have ever done. Full stop. Yay! I have really pushed myself and been in tears over things not going right. But I know I've always done my best. And then to see that my best actually got me into the semifinals, I just couldn't believe it. I just literally couldn't believe it. And now I'm in the final and that's just beyond my comprehension. <laughs> well, I've barely seen her. Um, she's been tired a lot of the time and she's been working incredibly hard. Really? But she's done so well. I'm incredibly proud. Winning MasterChef would just be that boost of confidence. Becoming a new mum, moving to a completely different country, and wanting to somewhat really kind of be accepted. <laughs> I'll feel like I'm one step closer. <laughs> I was born in South Yorkshire in a little village called Monk Breton. Life growing up for me was wicked. Growing up, it was very much like, it was like proper tea. Steak pie chips, lovely. Lasagna and garlic bread, yeah, lovely, lovely. On a Saturday night, we'd have a, we'd have a pizza in front of telly, which were lovely. When I left school, I, I went to catering college. But during my first year, I'd auditioned for Pop Idol. And obviously I, I ended up doing well and ended up moving down to London. So my, my course got put on hold and it's, it's been on hold for 11 years now. <laughs> Mark and I released a couple of singles, we had a number one. And then we, we fell into children's presenting by complete accident. And I absolutely love it. Cooking's always been in his blood. He loves it. Could not be more proud of him. He's doing so well. Go, Sam, come on. is 
the kindest, loveliest man I've ever met. Would do anything for anybody. Obsessed with food, <laughs> obviously. And we're just really chuffed for him that he's managed to have this experience on MasterChef. Yeah. It's weird, I've watched a lot of MasterChef and... And do you know what? I was always thinking, yeah, it's probably not as tough as what it is, though, really. It really is really tough and full-on and stressful at times, but absolutely incredible as well. It's been such a buzz. If Sam is the winner of MasterChef, it will totally be the most amazing thing that he's ever achieved. I, I am chuffed to be in that in the final. Mm. So good, mate. All right. Nice work. Yeah. Do that in the final. But there is that bit in me now that's going, yeah, but if you want it, that'd be even better, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'd love I would love to win it. I can't lie. I would genuinely love to win it. Kimberly, Sam and Rylan now have one last opportunity to hone their skills before they can compete for the MasterChef title. This year's chef's table will be overseen by one of the most renowned chefs in the country, the award-winning Angela Hartnett. A protege of Gordon Ramsay, Angela is one of only a handful of female chefs in the UK to hold a Michelin star. In 2007, she was awarded an MBE for her services to the food industry. Angela Hartnett is an exceptional chef. I've been eating her food for a long, long time. She has the brain and the discipline of a French style and the heart and love of Italian style. In 2008, she opened her flagship restaurant in London's Mayfair, which went on to achieve its Michelin star just a year later. I try not to be too complicated. I don't like loads of different ingredients on the plate. Ultimately, it's about good palate. I think, you know, you've got to be able to taste, you've got to be able to understand food. You know, you want to eat something that's delicious, tasty and satisfying. Angela aims for the stars. Today, she's got three stars that need to aim for perfection. Morning, Hello. how are you? Good, thanks, how are you? Very well, thank you. Well, we're cooking for five other female chefs. You know, Michelin stars, best restaurants. They're very good cooks, all these ladies, so you've got to make sure that everything is spot on. Right, so let's get going. All right, Start. ready? All right. Start. All right. They now have four hours to prepare Angela's three-course menu. I was quite excited when I met Angela and a little bit scared at the same time. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's like such a strong, powerful woman. It is quite daunting whenever you are working with a professional chef because, you know, you want to do it to the best of your ability and, and don't let them down. I think this definitely has the potential to be the toughest challenge yet. I have to believe in myself, so I'm just going to try and keep my nerves and just try and take it all in and learn and hopefully have a bit of fun while I'm doing it. These have always been my favourite challenges when I get to see something and then copy it. So, yeah, I'm really excited to, to be able to do that. I'm just really concerned at what it might be. Between you and me, I wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of Angela. I mean, you don't build a reputation as good as hers by being meek. All right, Sam, how you feeling? Okay, yeah. Sam will be cooking the starter. Roasted quail breast with confit leg, served with white asparagus and morel mushrooms, with a chicken sauce and a hazelnut chervil oil. But the reason we cook it on the bone is just much more moist and tender. Right. How much did you cook before you entered? Yeah, I cooked quite a bit at home, but obviously right. not to this standard sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, so. yeah. Just feel it there, it's very soft still. Yeah, yeah. So it's still quite under. We're just going to put it in the oven for about three to four minutes. 
We've got in here our white asparagus, but we've cooked those in a little bit of sugar and a little butter and salt. Right. We're going to do our morels in here, OK? OK. So just to get a nice colour there, you see, like a nice yeah, nutty yeah, colour, that's what we want. And then obviously your quail legs here that we want a little bit of colour and just heat it through slightly. So what you're going to have, Sam, is when you come to finish it, you can have a few little pots on the go at the same time. Yeah. Right, let's check our bird in the oven. So to me, that feels like we're there now. Once it's rested. Right. It's still going to be a bit pink in the middle. Yep. But that's fine. OK. OK. And then that's what you want. You see what I say? It's a little yeah, bit yeah. pink like that. So let's start to plate. To be honest, Sam, just make it look nice. I'm not so particular. It's got to be exactly like that. You know, to me, it's right. all about what it tastes like. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. A touch of the sauce. And there's your dish. Wow. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it looks amazing. I've never actually tasted quail in my life. Never cooked with it, never tasted it. So this is a first. Oh, my God. That is awesome. Well, I must admit, I'm a bit, I'm a bit nervous. There's, there's quite a lot going on. Hi, Rylan. You're right. Yeah. Don't look so nervous. I am a little bit nervous. So you're doing the main course. So we're going to be doing halibut. Oh, it's, you'll be fine. I can't believe you. Okay, so we've got a lovely. What halibut. is that? It's a fish. You know what that is? <laughs> what you do? That looks like a person. Do you know I've done this whole thing without touching a fish? Oh, really? How come? Why? I'm frightened of fish. Uh, this is the most frightening experience of my life, to be fair. I think when I was younger, my brother pushed me on the fish counter, and I just remember a fish in my face. And it's just, I think it's just stayed with me. I just don't, I don't trust the fish. What we're going to do is remove the flesh, making sure you take all the fish with you. Do you want to try that one now? Really? Can I just okay. touch it? Yeah, I think you're going to have to touch it to fill it, love. OK. Go in the ear, yeah? Yeah. Like that. That's it, yeah, look, you see, you're releasing it. So, what you need to do is take the skin off, and then we portion it. And then we take off this little bit of... Just square it off. Yeah, just like so. You all right? <laughs> you'll be fine. I'm having a moment. I ain't going to lie, Edge. <laughs> I am having a moment. So, nice hot pans. Well, I'm going to watch this. I've never cooked a fish. OK, brilliant. So, we just get a little bit of colour, and that's braising it. And what it's going to do is we keep it nice like and moist. Steam it at yeah, all. exactly. In this pan, we're going to add our little squid to just literally 30 seconds in the pan. That's all you need to cook there, hardly any time at all. OK, so. You feel that now? That to me is there. Yeah. Then in here, we're going to put our lovely tomato salad. That's going to go in there. A few of the juices to yeah. keep it nice and moist. OK. I think you can be a bit braver. No, I'm going to start, start small, work my way up. <laughs> Swallow. It tastes about fish, yeah. It's lovely. Yeah? Would you eat a bit more? Uh, like, little intervals. Little intervals, Throughout okay. the day, maybe. Yeah. It looks beautiful, and Angela's obviously brilliant at what she does, so I'll give it a good old go. I really thought I'd get away with not doing fish in this competition. I can't believe me luck. So, Kimberly, what you're going to do is the dessert, which is a souffle. Okay. okay. And it's a tonka bean souffle. So. Tonka bean. These are sort of these beans that you get from South America. So we make a base, which is a creme patissiere, which is made from eggs, sugar and flour. Add the tonka bean flavour to that, and that becomes your base for your souffle. You won't make any of the souffles until the actual dessert goes, so okay. it's very much sort of touch and go. But you'll be fine. <laughs> so first thing we need to do is our egg whites. OK, now start to add our sugar in. 
Okay, so it's nice and stiff, and that's what you're looking for. Then we add a tiny little bit of creme patissiere in here, and that basically gives you a nice, even mix, OK? And you're not yeah. overworking it. Then the rest in, and then you just fold it in nicely. Don't want to overwork it. I just want it nicely folded in. Then we're going to put three nice little pieces of pineapple in there. And then go straight in the oven. And then we hope. Hope and pray. On a tray. Straight in like that. OK? Mm -hmm. And we'll watch four minutes on the timer. While we're waiting for that, what we can do is then we've got here is our pineapple sorbet. It's looking good. Good. Wow. All righty. So, okay, right, dust with ice and sugar. And you have to do this. And that's how we'd serve it. Wow. Okay? Yes. That is unbelievable. Taste-wise, you got it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'll see you in an hour then, Kimberly. Oh, you're on your right. Come on now, Fine. don't leave me. <laughs> I have never done a souffle before. This is all very new to me. And that was one quick run through. <laughs> I love Angela. She definitely knows her stuff. I'm hoping I can mimic that. Hoping being the key word. <laughs> Just reflect for a moment on how tough this challenge really is. How good do they have to be today in order to impress the diners? This is their Everest. Angela is not going to let that food go out the kitchen unless it's absolutely perfect. Sam's first task is to prepare the quail. Every part will be utilised to give the dish as much flavour as possible. To confit the legs, they're covered in oil and cooked slowly on a low temperature until soft. Finally, the quail's wings are added to chicken wings for the base of the sauce, which will need to cook for two hours to reach Angela's standards. It's not going too bad at the minute. I've just, uh, I'm just in the process of making my chicken sauce. I've got to fry off and brown off the chicken wings. I've got to add some wine and reduce it all. So, so far, so good. Sam, it's not really your style, posh food, is it? It's not. I, I don't cook posh food at all, but do you know what? It's, it's, it's lovely not to posh be able to food. <laughs> And just says it's not posh food, Greg. <laughs> I think it's posh for you. Well, it's pretty posh for me. I've never, I've never eaten, I've never cooked a quail, so it's definitely different for me. Is it extra pressure kicking the whole thing off? It, yeah, it is actually. I must admit, the, the, you know, the guys out there, the first thing they're going to eat is my dish. So I want it to be good. I want it to go down like a storm. Do you know what I mean? I don't want them to be disappointed. Um, so yeah, it is a bit of pressure. How scary is Chef? Do you know what? At first, when I first walked in. I was pretty scared, I'll be honest. But she's wicked. She's been great. She's an amazing teacher. She's been very patient with us all. Do you know what? You're beginning to look like a chef. Oh, well, well, that's lovely. Not a good one, but... <laughs> Horrible! <laughs> <laughs> Sam's been quite confident. I feel that he's cooked before. He obviously enjoys cooking. He's just gone on and done all those quail, got his sauce on, he's reading through the recipe, so he's really sort of concentrating, checking every sort of stage. They're only 30 minutes in, but Rylan has overcome his fears and the halibut is filleted. Now comes the challenge of the squid. Oh, dear. Come on, Ross. Pull it out. Oh, okay. this is the deep end, isn't it? Yeah, you can do this. I can't. Yes, you can. I can't do it. <laughs> what was that? It was just the noise of the thing. <laughs> it just shouted. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK, so right, take right. this bit out, yeah? Pull that out, let's go. What is that bit? It's just basically part of his bone. OK, right, now cut that into those pieces, <laughs> let's go. 
This is the worst thing. I didn't even know how to do this. Whoa, look at that. Do you hear it making noise? I heard it, yeah. It's banana, it's banana. It's fruit, it's a fruit. It's a okay. fruit. Okay. He obviously hates fish, doesn't eat fish, which is quite ironic that he's got two fish dishes. <sighs> but, you know, he's attacked the squid after a little um, scare, and now he's getting on with it, and he wants to do it right. Give him credit, he's doing it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kimberly is on the all-important creme patissiere base for her souffle. It's crucial that she doesn't add too much tonka bean, as it can overpower the whole dish. Tasted it? I haven't tasted it. This is with the tonka and the vanilla, isn't it? Yeah. I so, and not of approval. No, no, it's nice. The patissiere must now come to the boil if it's to thicken and become a velvety smooth custard. It's about the thickness we're looking for. Well, that's exactly as it should be. It's what you've made in the creme patissiere. Finally, Kimberly needs it to cool if it's going to be ready to use later. Set. Perfect. OK. So you can first jump down. Woo! Kimberly, desserts? Yes. Have you made a souffle before? Never in my life have I made a souffle. <laughs> The problem is with a souffle is it either works or it doesn't. Right. Yes. A hit or a miss. Kimberly now has to get on with the other risky element, the delicate pineapple and lime sorbet. She has to heat the mixture to exactly 85 degrees. Once cooled, it goes in the freezer and she can only hope it will set. I've made a version of sorbet, but nothing quite as fine and delicate and amazing as this. All right, guys, so we're just over an hour till we start doing our first course, yeah? OK. OK. With prep flying by, Sam's quail and chicken sauce is ready. And his final job is to roughly chop toasted hazelnuts and then marinate them in a hazelnut and olive oil vinaigrette. I've got everything prepped, everything's ready and raring to go. I'm just about to start cooking uh, the quails so they can be resting and then we finish them off right at the last minute. Cooking the quail breast is a two-stage process. Sam pan-fries the quail in butter, thyme and garlic. The main thing is not to overcook the meat, you know, to make sure that the quail is nicely pink, not under, not over, just sort of on the money. Oh, steady. Hey. Don't worry. It's fine. Oh, it's just what it is. You've got gas in there, yeah. so the fat's just touching the gas, OK? Once that's done, they need to be oven roasted before being left to rest. Ryland still has to make the sautéed celery, carrots and onion sofrito for his squid gratin. You need a little bit of garlic in there as well, and then you add some white wine to reduce, OK? And then you're going to add some fish stock, OK? Yeah. Not all of that white wine, half no. of that, okay? OK? perfect. For the salad, Ryland needs to blanch the heritage tomatoes to remove the skin. We'll get some ice and a spider, please. I knew you'd react to that one. I'm cooking the spider. <laughs> Done the squid, I ain't touching the spiders. OK, this is a spider. See why it's called a spider? Oh, it's like a spider's okay. web, so that will help you take the tomatoes out, OK? Ryland, you don't like fish. You couldn't have put me with anything worse than a squid and an halibut. Are you going to eat this? Are you going to taste it? I tried a bit of the halibut earlier. A good chef's got to try his food, and that's what I've been doing. Good boy. You are the main course. I didn't realise that until about five minutes ago, actually. I've been in here for, like, two hours prepping, and... I then realised, hang on a minute, I'm doing the main course. And what's the most worrying bit about this? The worrying bit's over. That was the squid. Touching it. Now I've just got to sauté it. <laughs> I've seen you overcome many obstacles, but none as big as this. I know. Let's hope I can. With time running out, Kimberly decides to do a test run with her souffle. The creme patissiere must be warmed before being gently combined with the egg whites and sugar. 
If not done correctly, the souffle mix will split or it won't rise. be the judge of that. <laughs> wow. Consistency looks good. Mm. That's much that's actually a better consistency than I had mine. Really? Mm. Mine I felt looked a little bit split, but that's lovely and smooth in the center. It's really nice, yeah. Fantastic. Happy? Yeah, very. Oh fab. Okay, so well done, yeah. Thank very you. good, yeah. Thanks. I'm quite relaxed. I'm gonna go and get a coffee, a bit of lunch, come back in a minute. Fingers crossed they should be all sorted. We have gathered undoubtedly some of the best talent in British kitchens. You try impressing them, that ain't easy. Cheers. This is a happy gathering. It's it's really really nice to see you Cheers. all. Angela, you know, she's a great cook, she's big on flavour and she's going to demand, you know, and I think they've got big shoes to fill. Well, certainly Britons have got a pretty tough job. Just the fact that they're on there and we're sitting out here and they don't know us personally, so they don't know how lovely and calm we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a little bit concerned. Uh, these are celebrity chefs or cooks, so their skill level is probably very different to people that are normally in her kitchen that she's working with, so I think it's very brave. Not sure I'd do the same. <laughs> This is where it all kicks off now, so I need to concentrate and uh, hopefully all the goodness that's happened so far will continue. Starter, so quail breast, comfy leg, white asparagus, morels and hazelnuts. Mm. Sounds delicious, but quail is quite a difficult bird to cook. It's very small. It's that fine line between getting it cooked perfectly and actually it being a bit dry if it's over. So you're about five minutes away, yeah? Okay. So if we start plating up, Sam, yeah? Okay. You do it your own style, Sam, however you want to do it, yeah? Okay. Just make sure you got everything on. Nice, good. Right, come on, Sam, we need to speed this, otherwise things are going to get cold, yeah? You've got 30 seconds, Sam, let's go. Service, please. Well done, Sam. Well done. Thanks very much. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Did well. Yeah, Thank very you. well. Thank you very much. OK. Yeah, Sam! I think that went pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping that those guys out there who obviously quite clearly know how it should taste, I'm hoping I've done it justice. Sam's starter is quail breast and comfy leg with white asparagus, morels, a hazelnut chervil oil and a chicken sauce. I must admit, I think the, the legs are delicious. They've done a really good job because it's a difficult task. Is you know, such a small bird quail cooking it perfectly, and the asparagus, you know, really adds that to the dish. And I think they've done a, done a really good job. On the whole, I think it's a really well executed dish. I mean, as you say, the legs are just. Fantastic. I think there's a nice bit of acidity and with some sherry vinegar in there with mm. the with the oil which cuts down on the richness. Would you have liked the oil to be a little more pungent? Yeah, I can see where you're coming from yeah. with that. Just a little bit more zing. It could 
definitely have exactly what you say, a little bit more acidity, and it, I think it would sharpen up. I think it's one thing to be a celebrity and another thing to know how to cook. So based on that, I think they've actually done a pretty mm. good job. Mm. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? You all right? Yes. Very well. Good. Gosh, how was that then for you? That was amazing. Yeah, what, yeah, what an incredible experience. Definitely a different style of food to what I'm used to cooking. Was this the first time today you'd cooked that dish? Yeah, in fact, the first oh, time really? I've ever cooked quail, ever. Wow. So, yeah. Well, well done. done. Oh, yeah, well done. Yeah. oh, thank you. Was it all right? And I've got to say that the legs of the quail were absolutely fantastic. Oh, brilliant. It tasted Delicious. lovely. You know, just the right amount of salt on there, melted in your mouth. I thought you did a great job on that. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. That's, That's wicked. Nice, nice treat. Thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you. it. Good luck. Thank you. I loved that challenge. Really loved it. It was, uh, I must admit, it was quite, quite intense and quite intricate at times, you know, of making sure that quail and that was cooked. That was definitely the, the most difficult bit. But I think, I, I think I did all right, I think. <laughs> OK, Rylan, we've got 10 minutes. So start to get your uh, tomato heated up. Then you can go with your squid, yeah? So for the main course, we're having halibut and squid gratin. That sounds intriguing. Mm. I'm concerned that that could be quite tough. Mm. So it's quite a tricky one to do. Too much in one pan, quickly. But a bit in that other pan, just not hot enough, that one, that's it. Right, that's what you want, that sound, yeah? Nicely seared. This one's ready. Right. Yeah? We, yeah, in the pan, there. Oh, look at the legs. That's it, beautiful. OK, done. Oil in. Oil in. And then fish in, yeah? And the halibut, given it's such a, an amazing fish, it would be Sorry. a shame to see it oh. overcooked oh, in any way, so just, hopefully... Yeah. And then come and dress your salads. Yeah. Lovely, OK, perfect. Right, go and check your fish. There you go. Thanks, babe. That's all right, babes. <laughs> I think that one's done. Come on, then, out. Don't overcook it. And as soon as you're ready, you can take that up and you can start to play. You were happy with these to go? I am. Right, what do you call now? Service! Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, happy. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm proud of you, mate. Really proud of you. Thank well you. done. Are you happy with it? Yeah, no, it looked lovely. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you feeling happy? Not, I'm just so happy I've managed to cook a fish. I just hope I've cooked it well. But if I haven't, yeah. obviously I'll be disappointed. Oh, let's hope. Ryland's halibut with heritage tomatoes and asparagus is served with a sofrito and squid gratin. We've got the beautiful, vibrant tomatoes, the green of the asparagus, and the nicely caramelised fish, so I'm excited. The squid is absolutely lovely. Mm. It's got a lovely depth of flavour in it. It isn't rubbery. I could eat a big pile of that. Mm. It's mm. absolutely yeah. delicious. It's done a very nice job of the brunoise mm. with the squid. Mm. Lovely diced carrot. I think the halibut, for me, is cooked perfectly because it's very juicy, you know, it's got a lovely little bit of crisp on the outside of it. Someone that's potentially probably never cooked it before, I think they've done a fantastic job. Mm. All in all, it's a really beautiful, um, I mean, it's a really good, well-executed dish. Hello. 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 <laughs> oh, this ain't awkward. <laughs> <laughs> How was that for you? Oh, um, that was a, a experience. I've never cooked fish, so... Have you not? Wow. I don't eat fish. No, I'm a bit frightened of fish, so, yeah, it's... Um, the squid was just the most... The squid was squid divine. Was oh, really? Yeah. Was fantastic. I thought the squid was the star of the show. You could have just had a big bowl of it. Oh, I've, I've honestly, I've, you don't realise how much I appreciate that. The halibut was perfectly cooked as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For real? For real. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, this ain't Oil. a wind up. I just honestly cannot believe yeah, this. No, I the thought this was going to be the one. For someone that's never touched fish before, you've done a fantastic job. Oh, thank you so Absolutely much. Fantastic. That means the absolute world. Thank you. Have a lovely thank day. You. Congratulations. Take care, thanks. The ladies were so complimentary. It was just unreal. I can't process it at the minute. Like, fish is the worst possible thing you could put in front of me to cook. I've got no idea. And apparently it was lovely. So, oh, I'm over the moon. I feel like Superman's just not allergic to kryptonite no more. I can't believe it. I probably won't eat it, but I know how to cook it. Seven souffle, let's go. All right, Ten let's minutes. do it. Yep, moulds are ready. You know what you're doing, yeah? Yep. This is the moment of truth. I did one dress run, and it went pretty well. So I'm hoping that the, the big show will be even better. OK. Is that how it was before with you? Yeah. OK. Yeah, that's it. Go. I'm going to have a coffee and a bit of cake. I'll do that. <laughs> you all right? Come on, Kimberly, let's do this. So dessert, tonka bean vanilla souffle. That could be phenomenal. It could be a really fab pudding. It's a souffle. Mm. Big yeah, ass. Yeah. It's bang on quarter past three, so we'll go um, four minutes from now. Let's get your sorbets. That's it. Beautiful. That's it. I think the pressure of cooking a souffle is ten times more than cooking mm. a piece of fish or, or yeah, quail. Yeah, definitely. Feeling ready? You want to take them out? Yeah. OK, bottom ones. Right, you ready? Yep. Gently. Straight on that. OK, ice and yeah. sugar on. Mm. Happy? Happy. What do you say? Service! We chef. She's a chef. Beautiful. Wow. Well Thank done. Thank you so much. No, you Good did it. You did it. Now you get to eat one. Yes. <laughs> one for us. Well done, my dear. Thank you so much. No, pleasure. You know, I'm happy with it. Now it's just up to them. I hope that they like it. I put a lot of love into that souffle. I just hope they can taste it. Wow. Gosh, that is beautiful. Mm. <gasps> Kimberly has made a tonka bean vanilla souffle with roasted pineapple and a pineapple and lime sorbet. Looks lovely. It's got good height on it, and I'm just getting the waft yeah. of tonka yeah. bean. It just smells like the right amount. The flavours are so rich, but the whole dish is so light. Yeah. Have you got to the surprise on the bottom? Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Mm. Buttery roast pineapple works really well. The tonka bean, I mean, I use tonka bean a lot. If you mm. just mm. slightly overdo it, it destroys everything. And that is, I think that's perfect. Yeah. It's fresh, it's light. Given this has been made by a celebrity and not a chef, um, I'm pretty impressed. I think even if it was made by a chef, I'm impressed. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I can't make souffles to save myself, and I think this was executed perfectly. Happy food dance. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. 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 How many souffles have you made before in your life? Zero. Really? Wow, this even more first. incredible. That's an absolutely restaurant-worthy dessert. That was just fantastic. Thank really you. good. That means a lot, yeah. <laughs> Perfect mm. finish to the meal. Mm. Absolutely. Oh, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank Girl you. power. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. That is kind That's of amazing, isn't, isn't it? it? 
so many amazing compliments from them. They said it was absolutely beautiful and done to perfection, to restaurant standards. So I don't think it could have gone any better. It's fun, actually. I enjoyed it. They were a lot better than I thought they would have been. You know, these are three people that don't cook for a living, so, you know, you never know how they're going to be. But actually, they were great. Sam seems very confident. You know, he obviously, I think he likes to cook and must cook a lot at home. He just got on with it. He just attacked it all. I've loved it today. Brilliant. What an experience, you know, and it was lovely because Angela's food, it's non-fussy, but at the same time, it's Michelin star, which is great. So I feel like I've picked up a lot from today. Ryland was slightly nervous. He was a bit out of his comfort zone, but actually he did a good job, actually, and he remembered, you know, and you could tell he took it very seriously. He wasn't, you know, joking around and stuff. Cooking with Angela was such a pleasure. She was so helpful. A lot of chefs might not give me the time of day. They'll take one look at me and getting scared about a bit of squid and probably just leave me to just fall flat on my face. And she really took the time with me and really showed me what to do. And, and I've done it. Um, I can't thank her enough. Kimberly just nailed it, you know, I thought. I mean, they looked, I mean, I hope they were tasting amazing, but they look great. So I think she's done a great job. With Angela in the beginning, I was a bit intimidated. But as we started to settle, I got to know her. She's one of the coolest girls I've ever met or worked with. I'm definitely walking away with a good experience under my belt and a lot of lessons learned. That was nothing short of incredible. The food from all three of our finalists left this kitchen perfect. We've actually all been inspired by your abilities, to be honest. So, mm. wow. yeah. We're all going to go home and try Sufi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've loved today. I love that Angela has been so nurturing and so caring and shown our three how possible it is to do wonderful food. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you later. See you later. Bye. Yay! Well done. Yeah. We've done it. We've done it. We've done it. Done and oh, done. Happy. 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 Souffle. Souffle. <laughs> <laughs> the learning's over. The journey's about to end. One more task before we crown one of these three our champions. This is it now. One, one last hurdle to get over. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to get focused on that now. It's all, it's all about that last day. Gotta cook me backside off. Whatever happens for the final challenge, I just want to really enjoy it and just take up every minute because it's I can't believe I've lasted till the end and I'm just so grateful that I've had the whole experience. Honestly, if this had given me a knock in my confidence, I don't know if I'd been able to bring it back together. But luckily I can leave with my head held high and know that I've hopefully got a little chance to shine at the final. This is the day we've been waiting for, the day they've been waiting for. I think they're great. I think these three are brilliant. This is their last hand of poker. Winner takes all. I'm just so lucky to have made it this far, and I just really want to enjoy today. I'm really nervous, and it's like ruining it for me a bit, but I just really want to enjoy it. This is the last time I'm ever going to be in that kitchen. What, what an experience. Feels like the last day of school today. <laughs> I'm so in awe of the fact that I'm still standing and I've made it through this whole competition. There are no second chances today, and it is do or die. I'm excited, and I'm hoping that that's going to show through my cooking today.
welcome to the final cook-off. One of you will join a very illustrious list of celebrity MasterChef winners. Congratulations, all three of you. To see you three change, fight to get to this stage fills me with inspiration. I have the greatest respect for all three of you. Give everything you've got to these three dishes. Make us smile. Ladies and gentlemen, two hours. Let's cook. They have got to cook what's really in their heart. This isn't about cooking by numbers. This is about cooking food that they love. It needs style. It needs to demonstrate skill. And it needs to be a cut above the rest. It's got to be MasterChef final food. You've started already. I know, you know what I'm like. I love a bit of colour, don't I? You're making blue. I'm making a bit of blue. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with a bit of blue, Greg. <laughs> it's brilliant. Ryland has come such a long way. From a guy who was scared of the kitchen to someone who has absolutely mastered it. Flamboyancy, style, elegance. The guy's got a great sense of fun, but the other thing is, his food always tastes great. I'd like to think my menu offers um, me on a plate. I'm trying to make it all a bit fun and weird because, you know, I'm a bit fun and weird. All I can do is what I can do best, and that's cook and show what I've learned. Where's your smile gone? <laughs> I'm just waiting for me, me new ones to turn up. Um, I've got a lot to do again. I've done it to myself again. What are your three courses, Ryland? So my first course is a trio of savoury macaroons. My main course is a Wagyu beef served three ways. And dessert? <laughs> for my dessert, I'm making the shard. <laughs> the shard! <laughs> What's the, what the, no, the building? The, the shard, shard, the building. Yeah, I'm going to attempt to make the shard building with like marble, dark and white chocolate shards, and then inside I'm going to do a chestnut and biscuit crumb with coffee ice cream and dried raspberries, um, and then I'm doing what you saw that was blue. I'm doing the Thames in a blueberry foam. <laughs> I, I laugh. I. <laughs> That dessert sounds like two hours' work to me. Yeah, it is two hours' work. But you've got this other stuff as well. Yeah, but it's the MasterChef final. I've got macarons, I've got desserts, I'm having a meal. Can you honestly, honestly get all this done in the time? I hope so. If I can't, I can't, but you've got, it's the final. I've got, got to push myself, haven't I? How would you feel if John says, winner of MasterChef is Ryan? I, I, I really don't know how I would... I, I don't know. I, I was never crossed my mind from the start. I didn't enter this competition to win it. I entered it for the experience. And as it's got on, I've started to want to win it, and it scared me. So I'm just going to carry on doing what I'm doing, and hopefully it's enough. I'd, of course, I'd love to win it. Best of luck, son. Good luck, Ryan. Thank you. I expected Ryan to push himself. I didn't quite expect him to push himself this far. We have got the most extraordinary things going on. Savory macarons, traditionally served sweet, but we've got one with spinach, one with tomato, one with tikka flavoured. I've never seen a savory macaron, but now Ryland's mentioned it, it makes complete and utter sense. Absolutely lovely. Wagyu beef three ways. Lovely. But right now, that cheek is still on the bench with only an hour and a half to go. And that beef cheek is going to take at least an hour to cook properly. Followed by a chocolate reconstruction of a London landmark filled with ice cream and the Thames going past. This is beyond the imagination of most cooks. I'm just hoping it's not beyond the time constraint that we've given it. 
You haven't got time to sit here and play with Play-Doh. Don't start You've got to get the cooking in. How you doing, Ryan? Um, not great, but I'm getting there. Push, push. Push him. Good man. Never give up. Never going to give up. Never give up, never give up. Ah, yeah. Still time for a little dance. Please, have a small pan, thank you. Woo! I was reducing my red wine and I uh, let it go for a second. But thankfully, I put it on earlier than what I needed to, so I've got time. We're all right. Sam cooks crowd pleasers. Food that's familiar that people love to eat. Sam has taken his decent home-cooked food to a completely different level. If I won MasterChef, my friends and family would be over the moon. Especially my wife, she's been so supportive and she's been looking after our lovely seven-month-old daughter whilst I've been doing this entire process. So she will be completely over the moon. I think she might cry. I genuinely think she might cry a little bit. I wouldn't, because I'm dead inside. <laughs> Three courses, Sam. Yep. What are they? A pea, ham and mint soup. For main, I'm doing a beef wellington. Um, and um, for... Um, for dessert, I'm doing a sticky toffee pudding with dandelion and burdock ice cream. You know, beef wellington is notorious. I mean, how many rare wellingtons we tasted, I don't know. Does that not scare you? It massively scares me. Massively scares me. I must admit, it is a, it's a tricky dish to get spot on. But, you know, it's the final. I've, I've stayed true to myself in the style in which I'm cooking, but at the same time, I wanted to up my game with what I was cooking. What do you think you have to do to lift this title? The biggest thing I've learned from this entire competition is that it doesn't matter how many ingredients you put in a dish, I think if you can put a bit of passion behind it and a bit of love, it'll always taste good. So I'm going to try and do that today. You've bigged this up, haven't oh, you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I probably have, yeah. Best of luck with this. Good luck, Sam. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Sam's menu is unashamedly old-fashioned, unashamedly British and done properly, unashamedly delicious. A pea and ham soup is wonderful as long as you get the balance absolutely right of sweet pea and salty bacon. Don't get that right, it's insipid. A beef wellington is a stunningly beautiful thing as long as Sam can ensure that that beef is cooked inside. You've got to guarantee you can give it enough time and check that it's cooked. Sticky toffee pudding. Wonderful thing. He's serving it with a dandelion and burdock ice cream. That's unusual. Very, very unusual. And I don't know whether that works. I really like the sound of Sam's menu. I think it's really, really ambitious. The thing for Sam, though, it's got to be fine, it's got to be exact, and it's got to be absolutely delicious. It's not going too bad. I'm feeling pretty sweaty, I'm not going to lie. I'm rushing about, but I think it's going all right, I think, so far. But, again, it's a waiting game. I've got to make sure that beef's cooked all good and that. Ooh! Forty-five minutes left. Forty-five minutes left. Perhaps you shouldn't do the shard, just do a bungalow. Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah, we're doing good so far. Just have to keep up the pace in order to get it all done, but it's good. It's interesting with Kimberly. For me, there's a pussycat who's got her claws firmly into this competition, and she ain't letting go. She was daring, she pushed, and she always did something which was a little bit on the edge. 
She is now a very exciting classic cook. It's got style and elegance and grace. You know, I'm 33 years old right now, and dancers retire usually at 27. Luckily, I still find ways to do it, but I'm entering a new chapter in life. I'm getting older, I'm starting a family, I'm a mom, and to win MasterChef would just be that cherry on top of thinking there is a life after dance. <laughs> Kimberly. Yes, John. You're looking really reserved, nervous, apprehensive. I'm really just trying to find my rhythm and keep my calm, keep my head, and just keep my pace. I'm about to cry, it's because the onions. <laughs> no, it's because you're looking at Greg and I, and that makes me oh, very it does. sad. It makes me so sad. Yeah, because you won't see us again after today. I will you? know, it's, it is quite sad. I'm going to miss you guys. In years to come, yes. would you like to turn around to your daughter and go, this is the photograph when Mummy became the best celebrity cook in Britain. It would just be the best feeling ever. It would be so awesome. What are your three courses, Kimberly? So I'm doing a seafood soup with a mussel base with mussels, clams and scallops. I'm doing the main event is a loin of lamb with Jerusalem artichokes, shallots, uh, celeriac puree and a sauce. And uh, my Sinatra cheesecake. What's a Sinatra cheesecake? It's Blue done ice? my way. <laughs> like it. And what is it? It is sort of a, an upside down cheesecake. So the cheesecake itself is the base. There's a crumble on top and creme fraiche on top of that. And then on the side of it will be some rhubarb and rhubarb foam. What do you have to do today, do you think? I have to get these flavors done to perfection. I want you guys to make those yummy faces once you taste the food. That's what I'm after. I want that look. Love it, love it. From the low beginnings of LA and pop music to MasterChef. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Kimberly. <laughs> Thanks, Kimberly. Thank you, guys. Kimberly's menu, if it's right, it could be absolutely delicious. A seafood soup. Various bits of seafood, all have to be cooked separately, all have to be cooked perfectly. One over or undercooked piece of fish in that is ruined. The main course, Kimberly's baking her loin of lamb in a salt crust. The salt crust is too thick, it's going to be raw lamb inside that parcel. The gas well seasoned is going to be, raw lamb doesn't taste very nice. Cheesecake kept quite sour and rhubarb, sweet and sharp, could be stunning. But I don't know, really, what this dessert is. It's a bit of a mystery to me. I think all three dishes from Kimberley are ambitious. The real job here is to squeeze every last millimetre of flavour into it. Whoa! You have 15 minutes left. This is it. Just my sauce and I'm good to go. <laughs> I just hope they like it. <laughs> you have five minutes left. Oh, my God, it's really late. Five minutes me. left. Oh, f it. Right, that's it. Time's up. Stop. Stop. Rylan, all right, time's up, OK? We'll give you a couple of minutes to finish off your plates. OK. Thanks. Thank you. Starting to melt. John, go. Yeah, OK. Well done. You on? Yeah. Oh, well. Well done. Well you done, done it. We did it. Done it. Well done. We all over. It. Oh, Kim, I can see it. It looks beautiful. It looks, that looks amazing, Kim. Rylan, in you come.
Hello. Hello, my ambitious friend. <laughs> I love your ideas, where they come from, I don't know. Love the presentation, love your style. Thank you very much. For his starter, Rylan has made a trio of savoury macarons. One with tomato and goat's cheese, one with spinach and feta, and the other with chicken tikka. I, I like these little macarons. Don't eat the tomato bit. I've never, ever had a savoury macaron. <laughs> There's sugar in the macaroons. There is. So that you get a sweet start, which makes the goat cheese a little unusual, makes the basil one OK, makes the curry one fantastic. I would have loved a plate full of the curry ones. OK. They were wonderful. Thanks. Your macarons are really well made. They've got a lovely crispy top. They've got a sheen to them. They're finished the way they should be done. It's great. Thank you. Really clever. For his main, Rylan has made a Wagyu beef sashimi with a daikon and carrot salad, a teriyaki Wagyu beef cheek, with a truffle mashed potato and a Wagyu beef tea. That's beautiful presentation. That's Ryland's style, isn't it? That really is. That style, elegant, smart, very good. Love this. Mm. Mm. So many good things on that slate. I absolutely adore light truffled mashed potato with that sweet sauce you've got with that cheek. Love the sashimi with the soy and the sesame. Love the strength of the beef tea. However, that cheek, in my opinion, needs a lot more cooking. OK. A bit more. <laughs> oh, don't. A beef cheek needs really long, slow cooking, braised away until it falls apart. OK, I didn't know that. Rylan, there, there were lots of things you didn't know when you first walked into this MasterChef kitchen. Now, look. I've got to say, on this table, there's lots of things I didn't know until you introduced me to it. <laughs> Don't. Very, very good, apart from the cheek. For dessert, Rylan has made the shard, a coffee ice cream with a chestnut crumb encased in chocolate shards beside the River Thames, a blueberry foam and a black currant jelly. I love the marbling effect with the, with the chocolate. I, I know where you learnt that. However, that's massive for a dessert. But it's a big building, Greg. Really clever. I love the flavours of the coffee and the crumb and the chestnuts and all the things going in there. I think that's really, really good. Your chocolate's too thick and presently we've got a flat pack shard. The chocolate combination with coffee, ice cream and crumb is delicious. Thank you. Absolutely delicious. However, that's too big. There are mistakes. You did run out of time. However, if I could give an award for the most improved cook ever on MasterChef, <laughs> it would go to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Rylan. Thank Thanks you. very much. Well done, mate. Oh, thank you. That was great. Yeah, it's a lot of positive. Don't mind these. A lot of positive. <sighs> Sam, come and join us. Happy? Yeah, <laughs> I must admit. Sam, your food all looks really, really good. Wicked. Thank you. Sam's starter is a pea, ham and mint soup with croutons and a mint oil. That is fantastic. Whoever invented P&M soup 
Never imagined in a million years it would end up that sexy. <laughs> that is stupendous. Mm. Yep. <laughs> I love the thickness of that and the natural sweetness of pea you have really brought alive. That looks and tastes joyous. That's a wonderful way to kick off a meal. Wicked. It's thick, it's hearty, but at the same time, that essence of mint floating across the top of it just takes it to a different level. Your little bits of crunchy bread with the ham looks great, but it also takes me back to being a kid. Mm. We used to have soup on a Sunday night and break toast into the top of it and stir it all in. There was something great about that texture of toast and soup. It's great, it's a great looking dish. For his main, Sam has made a beef wellington with creamy mashed potatoes, green beans, and a red wine sauce. I'm very impressed with your style. I'm really impressed with the cooking of that wellington. That tastes amazing. The strength you've got through the duck cell, the mushrooms, and the ham itself is a perfect, perfect balance for that beef. It makes it very, very tasty indeed. I'm like you, on a special occasion, I don't mind a little potato with my butter. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> my only fault is that sauce has a slight bitterness. Right, OK. Very good. I can't find fault with it. I think that red wine sauce works really beautifully with your Wellington. I think it's really well made. I think it's well thought out. I love the way you cut that piece of beef wellington and you were so excited that it worked for yourself. And you said, food tastes better when it's come from the heart. That's come from the heart. That's a bloke who likes his pastry and beef and he likes his mashed potato and he likes his red wine. <laughs> Sam's dessert is a sticky toffee pudding with a dandelion and burdock ice cream. Again, you're taking something quite humble and you're making it very posh, and I, I love that. I love that. I love the work you put into your presentation. I really do. Thank you. That, in my opinion, is perfect. <sighs> Absolutely perfect. That sponge is made perfectly. You can taste the figs inside it. The sauce you've got across the top is not too sweet. It's perfect. The flavour of that ice cream is incredible. And it's a perfect, perfect balance for all the stickiness on the back. That is perfect. Yeah, wow. You've practised on a few puts, haven't you, on the way? Yeah, I've done a few, yeah. Well, your practice has paid off, buddy. Mm. Very, very good. What is quite incredible is the texture as well as the flavour, because your sponge is quite firm with a crispy outside, and I like that. But when you eat it with your dandelion and burdock ice cream, suddenly the whole thing changes, and I feel as though I've got this incredible cocktail of rum, mm. cola and cream. It's great. Amazing, thank you very much. You feeling OK? Uh, yeah, I am a bit emotional, actually. And I very rarely get emotional about things, but it's, uh, I've loved this. I've loved every minute. And to get those comments on the last day, is, is, uh, it means a lot. Thank you very much. Nice one. Well <laughs> done. Oh. Yeah, I thought so. Feel good? Yeah, good. Yeah. Nice to end, end with that. It's Absolutely. Nice. Kimberly, come and join us, please. Have a seat. Okay. You okay? Yes. I think your food looks magnificent. Thanks. Magnificent. Real style. Thank you. Kimberly's starter is a seafood soup with a mussel and chive based broth. Parsley Jersey Royal potatoes, mussels, clams, and pan fried scallops. Mm. 
incredible flavours are natural flavours, saltiness and sweetness that comes with seafood. Natural sweetness of all those fish cooked really well and some beautiful buttery Jersey potatoes. Beautifully cooked, lovely tasting, very sophisticated plate of food. Thank you. What we've got in here is a bowl of sweet seafood loveliness. I think it's great. I love the bounciness of those mussels, the sweetness of the clams and the saltiness of your scallops, which are really beautifully cooked. I think it's a really, really lovely thing. A really, really lovely thing. Well done. Kimberley's main is a loin of lamb cooked in a salt crust, served on a bed of spinach with celeriac puree roasted shallots and Jerusalem artichokes, and a cherry tomato, rosemary, garlic, balsamic and olive oil sauce. That is a labour of love and that is an absolute triumph. That is a triumph of cookery skill. <laughs> That sauce is sweet and deep. The lamb is perfectly cooked. But what really gets me is the silky smoothness of that celeriac puree. That is brilliant. That dish is brilliant. The depth of flavour in that dish is incredible. The sauce, the puree, on top of that lamb is incredible. Thank you. Mm. I'll tell you what really gets me about this competition is when somebody gets their head down like you have and you really care and I love that, I can taste it. This really gets to my soul because in here are little shallots which have been peeled after they've been cooked. Tomatoes, lovely cared for in the oven. A sauce that ticked away and boiled away and boiled away. Three processes going on here to get that piece of lamb. Absolutely perfect. Your celeriac puree, salty as anything, but going really nicely with that rich, dark, rosemary sweet tomato sauce. Kimberly, good on you. Thank you. It really means so much. I'm... <sighs> For dessert, Kimberly has made a Sinatra cheesecake her way. A baked vanilla cheesecake with hazelnut crumble and poached rhubarb topped with a rhubarb foam. Oh, it's a brave woman that messes with a cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> You have all the flavours of a cheesecake, but it's softer, it's creamier than a cheesecake. It's not too sweet. The rhubarb is brilliant because you've got the combination of sharpness and sweetness absolutely right. That is fantastic. That is better than a cheesecake. I could easily eat two or three of them. <laughs> I really could. I've got a few left, I'll get yeah? them for you. Okay, <laughs> all right. Your cheesecake is as light as a feather. It's almost fluffy, sitting with a biscuit nut layer and the taste of hazelnuts comes through really nicely. But the most impressive thing for me is the rhubarb. I love this little glass full of rhubarb, which is sweet and sharp, with the almost moussey foam that sits across the top of it. When you put the two together, it's great. <laughs> I'm absolutely elated. This has been one hell of an experience and I have definitely learned so much. It's been an incredible challenge, but to, to leave feeling like I've produced something that gave you guys the yummy faces is definitely... <laughs> Thank, Thank you, guys. Kimbap. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I'm happy. I'm really yeah. happy. <laughs> we finished. I think you guys maybe finally now get why we love what we do. To watch people like you grow and change and care gives us great joy. And, and I hope for you it's done the same. We've got a really tough decision to make. Step outside 
and we'll call you back in as soon as we can. Thanks very much. We had some fabulous food grace our table today. We've eaten very well. Now we have to do the tough stuff. We've got to do the judging. Ryland once again was really ambitious. I mean, that's a guy who pushes himself. And if you consider where Ryland first came from this competition, not cooking very much, he's come a huge way. He doesn't just want to cook food for us to eat. He wants to create something. He wants to make something that we're going to marvel at. I think he pushed himself a little too hard today. We, we know he ran out of time and he didn't have the time to finish off those plates the, the way he wanted. Sam defined his style today and I'm really pleased he did. We said all the way along his best food has been robust and it's been classic and that's what he did. I agree. The outcome today was three very, very good dishes indeed. Kimberly reached a level of sophistication that you can only find in restaurants. Each one of those three plates, unassuming, but they delivered in buckets. I think Kimberly today was extraordinary. From the lady who came in here giving us berries and fish to the sort of food she's now presenting is incredible. I'm just so proud of what I've managed to achieve. I've made it to the MasterChef final. I will dine out on that for the rest of my life. And I'm just going to take so much away. I've, I'm not frightened of food no more. I'm not frightened to cook it. So I'm, 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 I'm very lucky. Now that it's all coming to an end and just sitting here and waiting, it just makes me think about my family and you know, finally having the chance to go home and tell them the outcome of this crazy journey that I've been on. And <laughs> it means so much to me. And if I keep talking, I'm going to cry, so I'm going to stop there. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about the results, I must admit. It would be lovely for them to say that I've won it. I can't lie about that, but do you know what? I'm just so excited with what's just happened in there that it's, it's made me really happy. I can't wait to go in there and, you know, stand in front of them. I can feel proud. No matter what happens, I can definitely feel proud with what I've, I've done there. It has been an amazing competition and an extraordinary journey for all three of them. I think one of them today just stood out slightly above the others. I think we've got our winner. Well done. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Let's do it. This has been a fabulous competition. I think you should be very, very proud of yourselves. I think you have brought something quite special to this competition. Drive, energy and fun. It's been a joy getting to know the three of you. And we've made a decision. We're ready to crown one of you champions. Our celebrity MasterChef champion 2015. It's Kimberly. Oh, 
Oh, well done, lovely. Well done, love. Just don't put a blackberry on the face. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Ryland, thank you very much indeed. Of course. Thank you so no much. Thanks, thanks thank very, you much. very much. Thanks for having us. Thank Cheers, you. guys. <laughs>